So I recently moved to Charlotte after the passing of my father in August in Charleston. I had also ended a relationship and just wanted to be on my own and living in a city. I moved to a nice apartment with a fireplace. The apartment felt good when I toured in and moved in. After the first few weeks, I began to have strange feelings. Leaving the shower, getting changed in, and waking for water or pee in the middle of the night gave me the feeling that I had guests in the main room. I remember waking up one night and believing someone was sleeping on my couch. Before I went out there, I made sure to put on a shirt and pants because I didn't want to freak out my guests by being in the buff. As time went on, I found myself more and more self-conscious about what doors I left open, like someone was there and I didn't want to give them a show. This continued and almost has become worse. I'll occasionally shower and I can hear the sounds of someone getting ready in the bathroom. It also feels like a female getting ready or in the other room. After that, the dreams came, almost weekly. I've had dreams discussing with this entity that they needed to go. Now I sleep through anything, so what I found weird was, after these dreams, I would spring awake and feel like someone was in the room with me or the entry to the room. It often reminded me of having to talk with a roommate who is hanging out in your doorway. After a few minutes, the feeling would subside like they left and I'd go back to bed. These dreams continued, oftentimes leading to shouting matches where I was demanding it left. About three weeks ago, things picked up a bit. Between the dreams and now, I've had a few more situations where I felt like someone was with me in the apartment and ended up buying a bathrobe. One night three weeks ago, she and I had a discussion in the dream. It was a positive dream, but she wouldn't tell me what she wanted. I snapped awake and felt like someone was close, like near the bed close. After a minute of contemplating my options, I spoke out loud that I was leaving. I heard a sigh, in my ear like someone was next to my bed. I was terrified, I threw the bathrobe on and drove around for about an hour. I decided I wouldn't acknowledge her, or it, and just go on with my life. Two days later, I saw her. I was cleaning the house and doing laundry. My laundry room is a closet off the kitchen. I was in the laundry room in my boxer socks and a tea sorting laundry at the time. I got the feeling that someone had just come in the front door. Milliseconds later, I look at the other side of the kitchen and saw a woman standing there. I screamed crazy loud and she was gone. She wasn't in any crazy old clothes from the Victorian era. Actually, she looked like she was wearing a blue and white 80s shirt and some jeans. I'm mad that I panicked because I couldn't see her face before she was gone. I was mad so I started addressing her. First, I would tell her I needed to sleep tonight and to leave me alone. A few days later, I asked for a sign. Stupid, I know. Well, I have this antique bell thing and after running out for food, I came home and found it rolling across my floor in front of me. There is no way it could have left its location without force. Since then, I see her more and more. I've gone back to ignoring, but it doesn't help. She hasn't done anything malicious or destructive, just is here. I'm kind of stumped on how to handle this and just weirded out. Update, March 12th, 2019. So I did some exploring in this area. Without giving too much away, my complex is long and winding. I've never been to the other side because I don't need to go that way as I'm close to the main road. Well, on the other side of the complex, within a tenth of a mile is a massive high-tension wires, the huge power lines, and a substation below it. On that station is a cell tower. I know nothing about the paranormal besides what I've researched and seen on TV, but could there be some electromagnetism fields or something from there? Not sure, but... It was a thought. Also, there is a small brook in the area. On that other side of the complex is a standalone ER. From that area with the power stuff, I can see almost directly into the ambulance bay of an ER. Not sure what it means, but it was an interesting location. There have been no major traumas in the area that I could find, but I spoke to maintenance about the unit and it seems all the tenants leave after a year. Now, we have a decent transient population moving here for work and school, so maybe just a lot of energy left in the place. 
They said no major complaints or sudden move-outs. I bought Sage on Amazon, and that is coming, so I'll let everyone know about that, and I am looking for a psychic or medium for a session, but have no idea how to vet someone for this. Any tips would be welcome. The apartment feels quiet today. I've been keeping music on low and some lights on during the darker hours before bed, mainly the hallway light. Also, I only have one window and a huge slider, but I've kept the shades open on both to let some light in. Not sure what it does, but it makes me feel good. Finally, I'd like to say thank you for everyone that's responded. I've, I've never gone through something like this or anything even remotely close to it, so thank you for the helpful comments and the occasional joke to lighten the mood. This has been an unnerving ordeal so far, and being pointed in the right path is calming. There was a thread on the main page asking cops if they have ever experienced anything creepy or odd at a crime scene. I posted the following story, and some people said I should submit it over here. I'm new here, so be gentle. This is the entire post, but the second story is the one that got the most attention. I've seen a lot of suicides, but one sticks out. This elderly female had her adult daughter living with her. She called us because she hadn't seen her daughter for two days and hadn't heard her moving around upstairs. The stairway going up was very narrow, and at the top was a direct 90-degree turn into the bedroom. The mother was too elderly to climb the stairs, so she called us. We get there and enter the bedroom and find the daughter dead. She hung herself by tying the rope from her robe around her neck and the other end to the bedpost. Then she just laid on the floor and let her weight compress the rope. Seemed odd because she could have easily just sat up or lifted herself up to keep from being strangled. Almost wouldn't thought her body would have done it on its own as a defense mechanism. Anyway, we untie her and check vitals, but she's gone. We need to check the body for signs of trauma, so we do that. As we're turning her over, the air escapes from her lungs and she goes, and I feel the air blow over my arm. It grossed me out big time. Anyway, we couldn't get her out of the room because the stairway was too narrow. Ambulance arrives and we strap her to a backboard and lower her out the window and down the ladder of the fire truck. I felt terrible for the mother because she was in hysterics and her daughter being tossed out the upstairs window with the whole neighborhood watching. I never found out any details about her body afterwards, so I don't know if she took pills and then laid down and passed out, etc., but that method of suicide struck me as very odd. Next, got an alarm call to a home where someone had committed suicide the year before. The house was still owned by the family, but it sat unused. No one lived there. Another officer and I clear the house and advise dispatch that everything is kosher. No forced entry anywhere, but the back door was unlocked. We contacted the owner and he told us he leaves it unlocked. Whatever. Anyway, we're in the house just looking around, remarking how it's a shame that the house just sits there unused. The other officer goes to take a leak and I'm standing there in the living room when I hear footsteps upstairs. Now, we check the entire upstairs, each room, every closet, bathroom, etc. My partner yells from the bathroom, Are those footsteps? He comes out zipping up and we rush upstairs. Nothing. Doors to the rooms are open. We check each room again, each closet, everywhere. The upstairs is flat out empty. There wasn't even furniture left in the house. He's in one room and I'm in another when I feel this coldness enter the room. It was just a cold that felt like it encompassed my entire body. Then it was as if someone in front of me shoved me with both hands. It was a very distinct feeling of two hands shoving me backwards by pushing my chest. I'm a cop. Normally someone shoves you and it's game on. But this time there was no one there. Just an empty room. 
I must have sat there with a stupid look on my face for maybe a second or two, then I left the room completely creeped out. I met my buddy in the hallway and he tells me I look weird. I tell him what happened and he says, Yeah, this place is fucking creepy. Let's bounce. It was daytime and the house was fully lit as there were no curtains or shades on any of the windows. Later, I told my supervisor about it and he said he went to an alarm call there as well and as soon as he went inside, he got that creepy feeling where it feels like you're being watched. This story takes place in Santa Clarita, one of the safest towns in America. During the story, I was between 10 and 17 years old. I'm now 19. Some context, we lived in a two-story house that had two bedrooms downstairs and three upstairs. My family consisted of mom, dad, older brother, older sister, five dogs, and me, the youngest. Last thing my family believed, my sister and I had a third eye since we could predict a lot of stuff. But for now, we are only going over the spirits part of it. Now we begin. The experiences started pretty much right away when we moved in. One night when I was taking a shower, I saw a little girl outside of it, looking at me. She looked to be around six or seven. She had long, straight black hair and was wearing white pajamas. But after that, I got out and she ran away and I followed her. She disappeared completely when she went to my sister's room and I actually saw her later that night in my dreams. She told me her name was Alice and she needed mine and my sister's help getting rid of two bad men. I agreed, but first she needed my sister to see her. So she played with my sister's stuffed animals and then my sister asked me if I touched them. I told her it was Alice and that Alice wanted to talk to her. Of course my sister freaked but she'd meet Alice later that night and my sister agreed to help. The last request Alice made was not to tell anyone else as once I do, they will all be able to see the man in her. After that talk, I immediately saw one of the men. I went to the bathroom and walking back from it, I saw a really tall white sheeted figure standing in the loft. He looked at me and I felt so much fear, anxiety, and dread. He came after me and I ran to my room and closed the door. I cried hard, really hard. I couldn't stop because I was feeling pure terror course through me. After that, I questioned if I should even bother helping, but I still tried. Time and time again, I would run into him and he would chase me. He never really made noise, but he would tell me to stop running, and I never listened. It took a few months, but I finally broke and told my family. They all believed me as they were feeling the pressure from him and were all getting stress from it. Well, after that, my father saw the white figure. He was facing a corner of the loft and looked back at my dad, and it terrified him. For my brother, however, he never saw anything at a house. He only felt certain pressures, but he did manage to record my guardian angel one time opening his room door and checking on me. I'm still sad that the phone that had the video was destroyed in an accident. Now moving to my mom, she was actually able to communicate with the man but doesn't remember a single thing he said as most of the memories in that house disappeared from her, mainly due to my mom's mental illnesses. But my sister did manage to see my mom talking to the air, but it was weird. My sister heard a deep male voice that had a lot of authority to it next to my mom. However, she recognized the voice was coming from my mom and it scared my sister very badly. After that incident, time went by and... My tia, my aunt, and my nina, grandmother, moved in with us and they had experienced numerous things. First, my tia kept on hearing running upstairs when she was home alone. She would hear thumping and bangs and even two male voices talking. My nina, on the other hand, met Alice but sadly couldn't communicate with her. The last story with them is about my tia. She got up really early every morning to go to work, like four in the morning, and one time when she was going upstairs to use the bathroom, she bumped into someone really hard that was knocked down and there was no one around and realized she didn't even hear anyone else make a noise or fall. Those are the only stories I have of my Tia and Nina but moving on. So I got five dogs at the time of all of this and all of them would look upstairs and growl, bark and just watch it very intently. One time my poodle went upstairs and something hurt her very badly. 
We had to get a cast for her paw because it seemed that something had crushed her paw. Last small story before we get back to the main story is about my friends. They to this day say that the night that they spent in the loft is the scariest moment for all of them. You see, there were four of them and the first time they came over was when everything barely started happening. I had them sleep in the loft and they all said that a tall, sheeted man was harassing them all night and scaring them. At the time, they were the only ones to see his face and they said half of his face looked cut off. My friends would come over almost every weekend, but after that moment refused to go anywhere near the loft. Now to get back on track, after some time I started to see visions in my sleep of Alice's death. She was taken by the sheeted man and brought to another man who wore a very dirty suit. He looked very disorganized, but he had Freddy Krueger type gloves and slashed Alice. I kept seeing this over and over until one day I saw the killer. When I had to take a shower, I would have to cross the loft and there I saw him, crawling on all fours, stared at me intently with so much hate. He gave off an even more sinister presence than the white sheet. He was pure evil and something I didn't want to deal with anymore. Unlike the white sheet, Killer never attacked anyone, but he was just a terror. Have you seen the movie Insidious and the scene where the medium draws the demon on the ceiling? He's similar to that, and he even would crawl up walls like that. After he started to show himself, my dad saw him and actually started to sleep downstairs instead of his room because of how often he was seeing him in the room and scaring my father. My sister was getting super stressed from everything and told Alice she wasn't helping anymore. My sister never saw Alice after that. For me, there wasn't anything I could even do. I was too scared to even look at the man and... I was getting mentally drained from seeing them all the time that I told Alice I was done too. I was 15 then, and Alice looked sad and disappointed at that and told me goodbye. I didn't want her to leave, but I couldn't stop her and she vanished and that was the last I saw her and the two men. Things actually calmed down a little bit, but my family started to break down. My parents divorced because my brother almost died in college and my dad refused to travel to see him and my mom never forgave him for that. My sister suffered with major depression and bipolar and even PTSD from everything. As for me, the events from Alice and the men and other personal stuff drove me to a breaking point and I developed paranoid schizophrenia. The paranoia of not seeing the man anymore, the feeling of dread and death lingered drove the development. The spirits mixed with anger and hatred from everyone built and broke everyone. We decided we need to move on from that house so we moved to where we are now. Now everything seems to be fine. My brother is in good health. My sister lives in Seattle pursuing her dream of music producing. My mom and dad decided it was best to live together still and me who had moved on professionally. Things really hit the fan in the old place and it almost tore my family apart. The anger and fear that the old house had was too much for us to handle. Now we still have paranormal activity but a complete 180 compared to that old house. If I were to give advice to anyone about spirits, never help them as sometimes they will pull you and everyone else into something none of you have the power to help with. <laughs>